You say Donald Trump, if he is reelected, it will be the end of the republic. What do you mean? He's told us what he will do. It, it's very easy to see the steps that he will take. People who say, well, if he's elected, it's not that dangerous because we have all of these checks and balances, uh, don't fully understand the extent to which the Republicans in Congress today um, have been co-opted. One of the things that we see happening today is a sort of a, a sleepwalking into a dictatorship in the United States. And that is from former Republican, very conservative Congresswoman Liz Cheney, warning that re-electing Donald Trump as president will be the end of the republic. Now, Trump's proposed 2024 agenda includes ending birthright citizenship to children of people in the U.S. <laughs> illegally, ordering immigration and customs enforcement to targ le target legal citizens who espouse, quote, anti-American and anti-Semitic views, reimposing the travel ban from his first presidential term, terminating the Department of Education, and reclassifying federal workers in order to easily fire them, and possibly investigating his political opponents as well. Now, we know this because Trump has announced much of it during his campaign rallies, all of it's on his campaign website. Uh, writers and editors at The Atlantic are so concerned they are dedicating the entire next issue to how a second Trump presidency could change America. Those are the headlines. Uh, let me read you some of them. The revenge presidency, America will abandon NATO, loyalist lapdogs and cronies, women will be targets, and the specter of family separation. That comes out. Later this week, back with us at the table, Jamal Simmons, Lee Carter, John Avalon. Um, John, Liz Cheney's interview with John Dickerson was striking. Yes, on Trump, but I thought perhaps even more striking when she said this about who should control, because her book gets a lot into Mike Johnson before yeah. she knew he was going to be Speaker of the House and how he was a friend and then she viewed him as dangerous. But this is what she said about why Republicans, like her, Republicans should not control the House in 2025 when it comes time to certify the election. Here you go. I believe very strongly in those principles and ideals that have defined the Republican Party. But the Republican Party of today has made a choice, and they haven't chosen the Constitution. And so I do think it's, uh, it presents a threat if the Republicans are in the majority in January 2025. Were you as struck by hearing that from her as I was? Yes. Yeah. But I think it's just that stark. She's been warning for a while you can't be for Donald Trump and the Constitution. Those two things are fundamentally in tension. I think the phrase sleepwalking into a dictatorship um, should wake people up. Well, we have been sleepwalking into this election. Donald Trump is the first major party you know, person who's likely to be a nominee. We haven't voted yet, and I think there's still a chance for Republicans to take their party back. But who's campaigning on an autocratic platform? Um, and the policies that you laid out are all indications of that in addition to his own instincts and temperament. So this is a five-alarm fire for our democracy, and that's about something much bigger than Democrat versus Republican teamism that has dominated our politics. And that's what Liz Cheney is warning about with unique credibility. And I'll say, it's not just Liz Cheney, right? Look at the number of former Trump administration officials who are warning starkly that returning Donald Trump to the presidency would be fundamentally dangerous to our democratic republic. Uh, and I, I want to expand on this, because I think this is an important point. Because a lot of people, Lee, will see the Atlantic uh, issue and think back to the National Review issue back in 2016 mm -hmm. yeah. and say, well, none of this stuff moves the needle. This doesn't change anything. You know, or it, that was all about uh, things that didn't actually happen. What's going to be different this time isn't just necessarily pursuing specific policies. It's personnel as well. Yeah. And making very clear, you know, McKay Coppins in the Atlantic piece, uh, uh, Magazine has a piece on loyalist lapdogs and cronies. He's quoting Hogan Gidley, a former White House spokesperson, saying, I think there's going to be a concerted, calculated effort to ensure that the people he puts in his next administration, they don't have to share his worldview exactly, but they have to implement it, basically obedience over credentials to some degree. Well, I mean, that's what, we're, we're, that's what he's saying here. But I think we have to take a step back, because to say that this is going to be so influential to the election, when you see something like Liz Cheney saying this, then you have to understand that Republicans, just like Democrats, think democracy is at threat if the other side wins. 52% of Democrats believe that democracy is at threat, but 47% of Republicans <clears throat> think that democracy is under threat if the other party to win. And it's for very different reasons. I think both parties are baffled by each other. Both parties are terrified of each other. And they're not going to hear this from somebody that they don't necessarily trust as credible. And I think many Republicans look at 
Liz Cheney as a former Republican who's abandoned the party. But, but the fundamental difference is that Liz Cheney is a conservative Republican, and her father was a multi-term vice president who's been warning the same thing, that the Trump administration officials who are saying this are not just Republicans, but conservatives who served with the man they're warning about. Mm -hmm. There's nothing remotely analogous to that in the Democratic there, Party right now. That's two, just reality. There's a two-page spread in, in The Atlantic, bright red pages, Jamal, with, with quotes from everyone, from John Kelly, to Rex Tillerson, former Secretary of State, to, to Jim Mattis, to all of these people saying, it, basically, it can't happen. It is so dangerous. The question is, that it just has not moved the needle for Republican primary voters at all. It hasn't the moved The people the that were there in the room. That's right. It hasn't moved the needle for Republican primary voters. It has moved the needle for the American electorate. And if you think about what's happened in the elections since Donald Trump got elected in 2016, mm -hmm. 18, 20, 22, we have seen the American people say, no, thank you. Here's the softer side of the problem of what we're talking about. When you're in government, when you're in an organization, people want to please the person who's in charge, yeah. right? Everybody's trying to do what's going to be best for the boss. You want your hat on the shoulder. You want your gold star. If the, pre if the president is a person who believes that they want to... Uh, it's like they want more things for themselves, right? They want retribution as the order of the day. Then people will do more of those things in order to impress the president. And that filters its way all the way down. My friends from the Obama administration used to say, you send an idea to the lawyers because that's where fun went to die, right? <laughs> because the president you know, never wanted to do anything that was going to get him in legal trouble. If that's not the case, people begin to do all sorts of things that might seem fun, but are not good for the democracy. And, and this is the point Liz Cheney was making about Mike Johnson and his dissent, right? There is a Isn't that fascinating, by the way, it, that she wrote all this stuff before he was speaker? Before he was, yeah. And saying that, look, good, good people will start losing their moral bearings in a desire for, for careerism, right, at the end of the day. It's to, to, to get ahead. And, and that is such a selling out the country cheap. Um, and and, and in, a, in a fundamentally dangerous way, that this sort of teamism and careerism can erode fidelity to the Constitution, to the democracy, to things that people espouse in private. And look, Democrats need to understand there's a reason. They need to do more reflecting on why polls show that often people view the two parties as equally extreme. That's a perception problem that Democrats need to take seriously. But we shouldn't pretend that it's rooted in reality in the same way when you have so many Republicans coming forward and warning about Donald Trump. But I think to dismiss it is their own peril. Because at the end of the day, what we're doing is saying one is evil, one is right. And that's the problem. What you see Republicans dig their heels. Republicans will dig in their heels because you're going you're gonna to tell them that in order to admit this, they were wrong. And that is something that they're just not willing to do. Well, well that's about saving face. That, that's a, that's a, a different issue, by the way. And, and yes, absolutely. And by the way, there should be much more humility about the feedback loop between the extremes in our politics. But we also have to have the reality filter about how proportional those are. In and the reality filter, I just want to remind, the reality filter is people are trying to please the boss. And that is what is dangerous. We have a boss who is not up to any, doing anything good for the country mm -hmm. and the democracy. Jamal, John, Lee, thanks, guys. Thank Please. you. Let's bring in uh, Grace Seegers, staff writer at the New Republic. Grace, good morning. Uh, it's wonderful to have you on the show. Um, this, of course, not out of character for Liz Cheney, but still a very stark warning for her. How how much weight do her words actually carry? Well, good morning, Casey. I think that's what is most noticeable about this um, very stunning uh, acknowledgement of her concerns is how little it will actually matter with her former colleagues. You know, we are a couple of years removed from Liz Cheney being the conference chair of the Republican Party in the House. And today she is persona non grata. Her uh, former colleagues do not agree with what she is saying. In fact, they actively dismiss what she is saying. And I think that what is particularly shocking about this announcement that she has is how little it will actually matter with House Republicans right now, and even with Republican voters. I think that's part of why she is taking such a strong stance, because she feels as if she needs to talk loudly to be heard. And I think that she will be heard, just not necessarily by the people she's trying to reach. Yeah, I mean, Grace, one of the things that she and her kind of the group that she's been running has been doing, and this, of course, her interview in connection with the book um, that she is releasing has been focused on elections, on making sure in particular elections officials and states, things that might fly under the radar, um, are not ignored if they are um, not seriously, if they're not taking seriously threats to the actual process, um, kind of the way that uh, the former president challenged things uh, in the courts. Um, do you think that that effort is going to make any difference here? Because I, I do think you're right that, you know, she tries to sound this alarm, 
Uh, but there's not a, a willing audience to hear it, at least not among Republicans. What about the rest of it? I do think that this effort is probably likely to be the more effective of the routes that she has taken. Seems like she has taken the path of doing more PR events, of trying to actively get the word of her beliefs out there with the interviews, the books. And then there is the more practical and pragmatic route of taking action through lawsuits and legal action to try to prevent the kind of um, attempts to thwart an election that we saw in 2020 and early 2021 from happening again. So I think that if there is going to be a lasting impact, is likely going to be from this latter path that she has taken and less so from the dire warnings that she has given. But again, I do think it matters that she is saying what she is saying. It's just right now, it's not going to reach her intended audience. It may be more for posterity for folks to look back on and say, wow, Liz Cheney was right. I think that is probably what she is expecting more than actually reaching some of those former colleagues right now.